What's up, everybody? This is Miss Maggie T, and we are Atlanta Falcons Nation, the heavy hitters. Welcome, 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 everybody. Come on and tune in, tune in. It is Friday, right before game day, coming from a terrible, terrible loss. And you know what? We need to get it this this week. We got to get it this week. But let's go ahead and see who we got on here on this panel. We have Mr. Mad Mike Sports right here in the Georgia hat. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Bulldogs for life. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Hint at you, Kevin. Hint at you, Kevin. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? All Good right. Evening. Peace up. Peace up. And we have Mr. Kevin. He is a Yellow Jacket fan, but that's okay. We don't care. Hey, hey, I'm, hey, I'm trying to tell you. I'm going to put some tricks on your name now. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, we got the fellas tonight. It's gonna be our last. Actually, this is gonna be our last Friday night. Um, we are actually moving mm. to Tuesdays, everybody. Right after game day, so you already know that show's gonna be yeah. double hype, depending on Sunday's um income. So outcome, whatever. Mm -hmm. So. For further ado, I'm jumping off of here. Make sure y'all subscribe to Atlanta Falcons Nation. If you're on Facebook right about now, if you're on the Falcons Nation, mm -hmm. just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us a like, as well as Mad Mike Sports, as well as Jew Talk Sports, and Jess K Styles, y'all. And I miss Maggie T. And I'm out, y'all. Enjoy y'all show. Already, already. Oh, man. All right, fellas. Um, I'm going to start this off with a... What did little uh, huh? We're gonna start off with a little uh with a little dick right here. All right, well, right, huh? Right, huh? Right, huh? We're gonna start off right here. Yeah, right, huh? Okay, yeah, right, huh? Yeah, right, huh? All right, man. Three keys to victory, man. Uh, Bears, Falcons. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna kick this damn thing off. I, I just gotta get this out of my gotta get this out, man. Um, my first one is kind of a little different. Um, not much, but when you look at the Atlanta Falcons, man, their offensive line, um, is obviously they gotta get the running game going. We don't know if Mr. Julio Quinteros, Quinteros, Julio Lopez Jones. We don't know if he's gonna be healthy or ready for the game, man. Um, to be honest, I don't want him playing uh, playing um a hamstring is a tricky it's something tricky man and any if he tweaks it any further than any more than what he's done now um it could linger on the entire season so i would much rather have a healthy you know to get julio healthy um a lot of people are thinking right now like look we don't know we ain't even gonna win the damn game so we need julio to play all right, we're trying to win a game. Um, me, I, I don't, I don't think we should. I don't think we should uh, play Leo Jones. And as much as he's saying that, I think it's the right thing to do. So the first one is got to get that running game going. You're not going to get a lot of teams are not going to respect Calvin really the way they respect Julio Jones. If Julio Jones plays, I don't think he plays. Um, but you got to get their game going. And when I'm talking about running game, I mean not running 15, 30 plays up the middle. We need to attack those. We need to attack the perimeter. And I mean go right at Bill Mack. Go right at those guys, Robert Quinn. Go right at them. Force them to be physical. We don't need these guys on third down, you know, get on third down and they just pin their in, heels back and get out the mat round. No, we need to make them – we need to be physical. We need to be physical. We need Todd Gurley to get out in space. You know what I'm saying? We need Brian Hill to get out in space. They haven't been doing a lot. They haven't been attacking the perimeter like they typically can and do. So I say the Falcons, the first one, they got to get their running game. They got to attack the perimeter. The second man, um, they got to stay aggressive on the defense side of the ball. All right? They got to stay aggressive on the defense side of the ball. Tack, um, he's questionable. Fowler, he's questionable. Both of those guys can be a game time decision. We can't sit back and let 
Mitchell Trubisky, okay? Mitchell Trubisky get comfortable. If this motherfucker throw over 300 and over 300 yards, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be freaking pissed. I'm going to be mad as hell. I don't want to see that. So we need to get after him. If we can't manufacture a Paris, we got to get at him. We cannot wait for stuff to happen. This is what I'm sick of with Dan Quinn. We try to wait for stuff to happen. Maybe if we go to the cover three, the defense line to get some pressure. Maybe if we have good coverage, we can get after the quarterback. No, don't maybe anything. Thing. Go get it. Whatever you want, go get it. And the Falcons can't play around. Because if you lose this game, man, Mike ain't going to be able to say your ass. You ain't going to be able to say hell. Debo ain't going to be able to say your ass. Nobody going to be able to say y'all. So they got to get after, man. And I mean aggressive. They cannot allow quarterbacks to continue to get in a rhythm. We've seen this back-to-back games already in the first two games where quarterbacks are just sitting back there and we not blitzing. We're not mixing coverages. We're not doing anything. We get a damn lead. We get a freaking lead, and these guys go back to the cover three and do nothing. So they got to get at That's the second one. And the third one is obvious to me. I'm completely baffled about how the coaching staff has really <sighs> conducted themselves this past week. I, I was I was sick about what I saw on the coaching staff. You got the owner comes out. He says one thing about these guys. Um, it was clear to him that the players on the field had no idea what they was looking at. They had no idea that what the rules were on special teams. You know, the coach saying one thing they did know. And the players are saying one thing, the owners are saying another thing, and we got we got the you got the offensive coordinator and Dirk Cubs with more thirty nine points. Like, bro, don't be don't don't take up for Dan Quinn. Thirty nine points. If you can't play, if you cannot win a game with thirty nine points, you don't deserve to be a head coach in my eyes. If you cannot stop a team and you score thirty nine points, and you got weak at look. This one thing about NFL coaches, man, it's a fraternity, but this shit right here, this shit right here, this shit right here, unbelievable. Cannot have that. We cannot have coaches, you know, worried about the bond between the coaches, you know, that coaches fraternity over winning games. This is right now, it looked like it's already going down. It's already looked like these guys are turning on each other. So I need the third one. I need to see that team is together. That's it. I just want to see this team together. I want to see some chemistry with the coaching staff. I want to see some chemistry with the players. I need to see chemistry because for me, it looks like these guys have already turned on each other. And we're talking about game freaking three of the season. So that's that's my three, man. Um, K-Style Juke, man, one of y'all can take it, man. I'm, I'm, mm. That's all I got, bro. I'll go, I'll go with this one. <clears throat> This is gonna this going this gonna actually tie into kind of what you said, Mike. But I'm gonna go with my three acronyms, which I say they need to be creative, they need to show intensity, and I, and the last word you're gonna like is gonna be 60. Like I said, like I said, what I want to see, what I what I want to see is I want to see, like you said, I want to see them mix up them some things. Show some different looks uh-huh. on offense. Uh-huh. If Julio Jones is not is going to be out this game, you could flex out one of the tight ends. Uh-huh. As good as this linebacking court is that Chicago has, they 50-50 when it comes to coverage, so you have a spot right there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. As good as Mac is, he's not going to be in coverage that often. Mm-hmm. And defensively, like I said, we we like we always said from the last game, you have to mix the blisters up. You have to mix your defenses up. Like I said, you have you have to come after him. You don't want him to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that also comes with the matchups too, because really, the only per- person I think that we're gonna really have a problem with is Tariq Cole. 
Yeah. 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 And then my second point would be intensity. Like you said, you like you said, you done got all the scrutiny. You you gotta prove that that brotherhood is real, or like like you said, mm-hmm. or it's just some words. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can't be you mm-hmm. can't be turning you can't be turning on each other this early. That's a bad look on that's a bad look. That's and, a terrible look though. And then like I said, my last word I'm gonna say is 60. Do all that for a full 60 minutes, not 30 minutes, <laughs> not 45 minutes, you. 60 minutes. And like I said, you'll be fine. But that also comes down with the culture as well. Like I said, you have to coach a perfect game. This is not a perfect team, mm-hmm. but it's a team that can get it done. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mm-hmm. turn it to you. All right, y'all. Y'all ready? So – our first key to victory is going to be protect Matt Ryan. We have to keep Khalil Mack and uh, Robert Quinn at bay. And the way you do that is what Mike was saying. I'm going to piggyback off what he was saying. We have to run the football right at these guys, mainly Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn is one of those players that the Falcons was trying to recruit uh, in free agency. It was going to be him or Dante Fowler. They said that he flipped the coin and the coin flip it, it ended up being the Chicago Bears. So sad for him because he chose the wrong team. Personally, I think he chose the wrong, uh, the wrong team. Now, I'm actually happy about it because we were able to get Dante Fowler, who's a lot younger and who should be, you know, who's just entering in his prime. As you know, Robert Quinn is one of those veteran guys who's been around for a long time. But I think that Dante Fowler is more of a complete player than a Robert Quinn. He's better in the run game. Uh, you remember seeing him uh, in C- against Seattle on that first week. And Dante Fowler was a one man wrecking crew on the edges. He was shutting down that edge. He wasn't allowing the running backs to get the edge. He was doing a good job of splitting double teams and stuff like that. And so I think this week to keep Khalil Mack, to keep uh, Robert Quinn at bay, you have to run the football. We can't come out, uh, come out here and try to drop back 40 and 50 times with Matt Ryan because Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn are the premier pre- uh, pass rushers in this league. They're sort of the best. So if you, you can't mm-hmm. rely on uh, Matthews, and I believe it's going to be Matt Gono that's going to be on the other side because we all know that Caleb McGarry is out. So to protect Matt Gono, we're going to have to run the ball and let this offensive line be aggressive. you got to run right at, a, at an aggressive defense. You have to run right at them. You can't rely on your, your quarterback dropping back that many times because what could end up happening mm-hmm. is strip sack fumbles and turnovers. We know – you know, we know how interceptions are thrown. It's when quarterbacks are under pressure. Sometimes the ball is tipped. A lot of Matt Ryan's interceptions are on tip, you know, tip passes. So we have to yeah. be very careful in this mm-hmm. game, but drop passes, back. Yeah. yeah, those tip passes, you know, has killed Matt Ryan in the past where guys, you know, are blocking. Next thing you know, one of those premier pass rushers, they're not getting to him. So they'll just jump up in the air and battle football. So in this game, we got to mix it up. We got to run the ball. We got to be aggressive. Um, I'm not sure if Julio Jones is going to play. Um, we all know that Julio Jones is a mutant, as I talked about before. He's not human. He's from Mars or somewhere like that. So <laughs> we know that he's going to try to play in this game. We seen him last week, even with a bad hamstring on that fourth down. He had to catch Bruh. and he got up and started running. And I was like, what in the world? And he trucked somebody on the uh, – so it's like we know that uh, Julio Jones – Man, I don't know yeah. before, man. I've been on that side. Yeah, man. Yeah. Julio Jones is a warrior, dog. So I already know it's going to take everybody. Like, they're going to have to take his helmet because he's one of those players that's going to want to play. So I'd be very shocked if he's not suited <laughs> up. Even yeah. if he doesn't, even if he he's takes some plays man. off. Yeah, man. I can't see I can't see them taking Julio Jones. You know, they're going to have to take his helmet because he's one of those players. You saw how he was looking at Dan Quinn yeah. after the game. Julio Jones is a warrior. Yeah. And he want to win at all costs. Julio Jones don't care about that. He care about winning. So after last week and how ticked off he looked, how he was staring at Dan Quinn, that goes to show you, like, it's going to take everything to keep that man on the sideline. So uh, we're going to get to my second key to victory. The first one is just protect Matt Ryan. Protect Matt Ryan and run the football. That's how you protect him. Keep a balanced attack. Mm-hmm. Don't drop them back 40 and 50 times because Khalil Mack and those guys are too good up front. Um, my second mm-hmm. key to victory is get turnovers. We need the defense to get turnovers like they did uh, against the Cowboys. 
And when we get those turnovers, we need our offense to score touchdowns. We can't afford to kick a bunch of field goals. When we get the short field, we need to convert those short fields into touchdowns. But I'm going to need at least one or two interceptions or a sack fumble. I mean, I really think that Mitchell uh, Trubisky is one of those quarterbacks where if you put pressure on him, he's a guy that looks at his first read. So if you see him pressure, he's going to look for that first read. And I really could see A.J. Terrell getting his first pick in this game because we know A.J. Terrell is extra aggressive. And Mitchell Trubisky is one of those guys that he's going to take chances. So I could easily see A.J. Terrell getting a pick six in this game where Mitchell Trubisky is under pressure and he just looks at his first read like, Allen Robinson, he tried to put the ball out there. <laughs> yeah, man. I can really see that happening. That's fire, y'all. That's fire. Yeah, man. I can see that happening in this game. Hot so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, in this game, we got to put pressure on Mr. Trubisky because he's one of those guys that he really doesn't know how to read defenses. He's a super young quarterback. This is only, I think, his third year. And if you go look at his college state, I believe he only started one year at North Carolina. So when they drafted him super high, I don't know why the Bears ended up drafting him in that draft super high like that. We all know that Chicago doesn't know how to uh, recruit quarterbacks and stuff like that, and they don't know how to – yeah, they, they had some of the worst quarterbacks. Yeah. College, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So I think that we definitely can cause a couple turnovers. Like Mike was saying, if they go for 300 and 400 yards, Somebody might need to get fired because there's no way that Mitchell Trubisky in this game should beat you. If the Bears beat us, it better be because they bludgeoned us in the running game. If they run the ball down our throat, that's one thing. But if Mitchell Trubisky come out here and throw for 400 yards like Dak Prescott, then somebody need to be fired because we all know that Mitchell Trubisky, he's not to me, he's not even an average quarterback. He's a below average quarterback. So in this game, mm -hmm. I'm thinking we're gonna get at least two or three picks. I can see AJ Terrell getting the pick. And I can see Deion Jones getting a pick because we know Deion Jones is a cornerback that's disguised as a linebacker. And we, are, we all know that he's a pick six waiting to happen. Now, my <laughs> final key to victory is going to be coaching. And Mike talked about it. In this game, we have to mix it up. As coaches, we have to mix it up. We have to bring blitzes. Mm -hmm. And the reason you bring the blitz is because he's not the best quarterback in the world. If this was like somebody like Russell Wilson – this was somebody that know how to read defenses. Then you got to kind of worry about, okay, or if he was a super accurate quarterback, I would be kind of nervous because, like, you know, when Pitt Manning was out there, he was a quarterback that you didn't want to blitz. Matt Ryan is one of those quarterbacks where you necessarily don't want to blitz because if he's protected, he's going to find mm -hmm. an open man. He knows how to read matchups. Mitchell Trubisky is not one of those guys that really knows how to read matchups. And uh, K-Styles was talking about Tariq Cohen. I, don't know if you know I actually got him on my face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was talking about Tariq Cohen, but I really think that Tariq Cohen is going to be in handcuffs. I really think he's not going to have a good game because we all know that Deion Jones, he shuts down those type of running backs. He shuts down the Christian McCaffrey's, mm -hmm. the uh, Alvin Kamara's, and I really don't see Tariq Cohen having a big game because Deion Jones, that's his forte at shutting down running backs in the passing game. So really in this game, the only way I can see the Bears really beating oh, us did, uh, the Alvin Kamara. He did that yeah, to Al Kamara. He almost put him on IR, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't really think Cohen's going to have a big game. The only way I see the Bears actually beating us in this game is if they bludgeon us in the running game with that kid, Mount, uh, Montgomery. If they run the ball right at us, up the teeth of our defense, kind of like Zeke Elliott did last week, that's the only way that I can see the Bears beating us. And they, they possess the football. Mm -hmm. If they don't possess the football and they try to get into a scoring match with us, it's not going to end well because we've seen last week, even in the Falcons loss, the last two losses, the first week we had 25 points. Last week we had 39 points. And I'm telling you right now, the Bears are not putting up 40 points. The only way the Bears are putting up 40 points against us is if their defense has a couple touchdowns. If they get a pick six or they cause a strip sack fumble and Khalil Mack take it to the house, that's the only way the Bears are putting up 40. There's no way that they can mm -hmm. keep up with our offense. Yeah. So if we get out to a lead, mm -hmm. good luck. If you're a Chicago Bears fan, because they're not a team that is built, that they can drop their quarterback back 30 and 40 times. They're a type of methodical offense where they have to run the ball. Now, they do have a good offensive coordinator and a good offensive minded head coach. I'm a big fan of Matt Nagy, the head coach. He does some creative things with Mitchell Trubisky. So we have to be ready for those power sweeps and stuff like that and those option plays. Because he's one of those type of uh, quarterbacks with Mitch Trubisky that can trick you into thinking that. 
he's he's a lot more athletic than a lot of people think. So in this game, we're really going to have to watch out for Mr. Trubisky running the football, not so much throwing the football. So if we can do those three things uh, in this game, uh, one, protect Matt Ryan. Two, the defense has to give me at least one or two turnovers. Three, the coaching just has to play, uh, be smart this week. No mm-hmm. on headed, go for two points. None of that dumb stuff. When we in their territory, we need to punt the football. None of that going for it on fourth down, unless it's a uh, you know it's at the end of the game where we have to have it. This is going to be a game of field position because the Bears have a have a great defense. So you want to make Mitchell Trubisky and those guys drive eighty plus yards every time. I don't think they can do it. I really think that even with us being shorthanded on our defense. Trubisky is not one of the best, you know, he's one of the, the weaker quarterbacks or one of the worst quarterbacks in the league, as far as I'm concerned. So I don't think he's going to have mm-hmm. to prove to me that he can drive the ball 80 plus yards each time. I don't think he can do it. And I'll just leave it at that. Man, if they score 40 points, boy, that mean that defense got diarrhea out the yin yang. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no way hey man, I, ain't no way. So he gonna, I want, I want him gone to the the day of. Don't even get your ass on the plane. Go away, Dan Quinn. He should not. Ain't no way the Bears just score over thirty points. There's no way. There's no way. The offense is not built, built like that. They're built for defense. So mm-hmm. if we see, like I said, if we see. Mitchell Jabrisky looked like a real quarterback. We already know what the issue is. And like I said before, man, um, the biggest issue that I have with this team right now is that I'm just tired of the lies. I'm tired of the lies. It's clear lies. And it's coming from the coach. It's coming from the coaches, excuse me, the coaches. Everybody, they, they're so worried about this coaching fraternity, they forget that they're supposed to win games. It's about winning games. I don't give a, I don't give a fine, you know what, about your cursing fraternity. Y'all can do that. You can kiss and make up after the game. Go ahead and kiss up. Do it. Take him out to lunch. You know what I'm saying? Go have go have dinner with him. I don't give a damn about none of that. It's about winning games, putting your players in best in the best position to win, and they're clearly not doing it. And then they get in these press conferences and, and sound so they're robotic. Like I don't care about I don't care about what y'all doing outside of you know outside of outside of the game. This is about winning game. We clearly saw that those guys didn't know what the hell was looking at. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Those guys had no idea what they were looking at. Everybody standing around looking at looking at the ball. You gonna tell me as a head coach y'all taught him properly? And then you got Dan saying one thing. You got you got Arthur Blank saying one thing, and then. What's what's worse is the is the special teams coach saying that he told them what to do, fall on the ball, and none of those guys moved. Every last one of them. So somebody lying somewhere. If you told, look, yeah. this is why I know these guys are lying. This is why I know he's lying, and they're trying to save face. If you have, if you told those guys to fall on the ball, at least one guy, one guy would have ran to the ball. At least one, none of those guys ran to the ball. Julio, Hayden Hurst, no, neither one of those guys ran to the ball. So that's how I know that they're lying. And that's what I'm talking about. They, they try to play Fox fans and the media like we stupid. We saw it. We yeah, know man. you didn't say anything. <laughs> exactly. We know you didn't say anything because nobody moved. You clearly told them not to just fall. And then you yeah. get on these press covers and act like we're stupid. So that's like what as a as a fan, when you when I feel like you in some intelligence, you got to go. You've already lost me. I can I don't give a damn if you win the Super Bowl. Dan Quinn got to go because of that. I cannot I cannot have a cannot spend my money to watch anything to buy their jersey when I have a lion side of crap as a head coach telling me one thing that's obvious, a uh, obvious. That they're lying, trying to save themselves, trying to save their coaches, so they kill, that so their coaches won't be out, you know, outlawed and banned because of you know stuff like this. It's all about right. trust. It's all about trust, man. And this is why I say, at this point, this is all Arthur. It's no longer on TD. It's no longer on Dan Quinn. It's no longer on Dirk Cutter. This team's success 
from here on out is all on Arthur Blank. Do you want to continue to employ a guy that clearly lies to your fans? And these people are spending millions of dollars just to see our players play at that dome. The taxpayer money to help you build that. Do you want that as an owner? That's all I need to know, man. That's all I need to know. Do you gonna put up with this crap? That's all. What y'all think about that, man? You think you really think that um, you know, this team is is past um Dan Quinn and the off and the coordinators at this point. You think this is more on Arthur Blank than the coaches? That's the question I, I have for you that. guys. I want to address that, Mike. I've been I've been salivating to address this all week, dog, about the, what happened on mm -hmm. that play, and I've been listening to what the coach is saying. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you got to learn how to read between the lines. And the, the problem that I have with mm -hmm. it after the game, I don't feel like even though Dan um, Dan Quinn is the head coach, I felt like they should have asked the special teams coordinator what he told the players. And if you listen to our special mm -hmm. teams coordinator, um, I don't think that necessarily Dan Quinn lied because what they did is they asked Dan Quinn. They said that the players didn't know the rules. I think the players do know the rules. What they should have asked, and they kind of were beating around the bush as the media, what they should have asked was what were the players told? Were they told to dive on the ball or were they told to back away from the ball? And listening to the special teams coordinator, what it sounds like is he told them, if y'all remember, when they seen them line up and they seen them line up without a tee and they laid the ball flat on the ground on the surface, they called timeout. And then at that point, the special teams coach, what he told them was, this ball is not going to go 10 yards. Y'all back away from it because the ball is going to go dead before it goes 10 yards, meaning it'll just be our ball because the ball will still be dead. But that was the wrong thing to tell the players because if you watch what the players did, and to be honest, when you're in the middle of a game, what player is going to watch the 40-yard line or whatever? What, what it looked like to me is the players were told not to touch the ball, and when the ball actually went 10 yards, they hadn't they didn't realize that the ball had went 10 yards. So to us, it's like, why in the world are they just standing around watching it? And we can clearly see the kids standing right there. We can clearly see Jaden Graham with the ball right there, two yards in front of him. All he had to do was fall on the ball. The problem was the uh, special teams coordinator should have never told them that this ball doesn't doesn't look like it's going to go 10 yards the way that he's about to, the way he's about to kick it. The reason you don't tell your players that is because you have no way of knowing if this ball is going to go 10 yards or not. So what you should have told Man, them I was, was about to say that. Yeah. What you should have told them is be aggressive. Be aggressive. If the ball come near you and you're within a yard of it, bump saying, because if you remember, if you listen to the, his media session, he basically said the players didn't want to go into that restricted area because if they would have touched the ball and they didn't mm -hmm. get it, then that makes it a live ball for the Cowboys to get it. So what? My thing is, that's the problem with the Falcons. Me and Mike have talked about this on our previous shows and in case styles that mm -hmm. we're always a team that's reacting to, to whatever somebody else is doing instead of being aggressive. And that's my thing. Mm -hmm. Those players being were aggressive. like, yeah, those guys were frozen because if you think about it, those guys lost track of where that 10 yard line was. That's what happened. To be honest, we were looking at them like, why are they just standing there? They had no way of knowing if this ball's went 10 yards yards or not they forgot where the 40 yard line or 30 yard line they weren't paying no attention to that so what he should have told them was be aggressive if that ball's right there in front of your face you go dive on it you always talk about Dan Quinn preaching the ball the ball the ball it's always about getting the football you're preaching that but we telling our guys don't but touch it how much sense does that make yeah. <laughs> I'll go because I'm, I'm I'm about to go ahead bro go go ahead go go oh god <clears throat> I about to say I've seen this online that the, the NFL films called this the watermelon kick. <laughs> what in the hell? <laughs> but, <laughs> what the hell is that anyway? A watermelon exactly. kick. See, I think that's <laughs> the, I think where the problem, like I said, the problem is that the instinct should have took over right there. Like you said, if the ball's right near you, <laughs> go after it. What it looked like to me, it looked like it, it looked like it was a bunch of players that were scared to make a mistake and didn't want to take the chance. So, yeah, the like coach told them not to go in there. The coach told them, don't go into the restricted area and get that ball because if you touch it and you don't actually recover it and they recover it, then it's going to be on you. The loss going to be on you. So instead of letting them but use that's, their that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. 
Like you said, you got like, like you said. That's it. Those those are the points where you have to let the football players make football plays. Yes, and that's it. Playing cautious. <laughs> That's it. That's the problem. They playing scared. That's what we've been talking about. Stop being, stop playing scared. This is the problem with the Falcons. They're so worried about making stakes. They're so worried about giving up big plays instead of going out there and make plays. Let these guys play. That's the issue. When you got coaches in the way of players and telling them, oh, don't do this because you might make a mistake. That's all you preaching. That's all you preaching. That's all you putting inside these guys' heads. Don't make mistakes. And anytime you focus on not doing something, you're going to make a mistake. In football, when you're worried about making mistakes, instead of playing freely and being confident in what you've been taught, you're going to make mistakes. And that's that's the reason why I say coaching needs to get the out of the way and let these guys play with instincts. We don't know if these guys can't, can't play don't know because look how many players have we seen how many players have we seen go to other teams and y'all might how, how how many players how many times have we seen players go to other teams and then they play they look like all stars they lead the Falcons and then go play like all stars I'm not, I'm not talking about off I'm talking about defense yeah. players it always play a lot better when they be on the Atlanta Falcons. It's because we continue to play scared. Stop telling these guys about making mistakes. All right? Stop telling these guys about making mistakes. It's clearly they're teaching them not to make mistakes. And when you teach them not to make mistakes and be cautious, they're not going to be aggressive. They're going to do exactly that, what you're saying. It's all in their head. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. The players play. Let Matt Ryan be the leader. Let Julio Jones be the on-field leader. Let those guys be the on-field leader. And that's what when you do too much coaching and not let the players coach themselves, that's when you have a, like that's when you have a team like the Atlanta Falcons blowing leads all the time because you always in the middle of everything. Let Matt Ryan, if he sees a blitz, and that's why I, this is why I uh, agree with a lot of Falcon fans, why Matt Ryan does it audible. It's not that. It's because the coaches want all the control. They want they want complete control of the game. When Tom Brady was in New England and the offense wasn't working, Bill's like, oh, shit. You know, our offense is not doing anything. We're just going to go. We saw the Super Bowl. We're just going to go. We're going to spread everybody. And Tom, just do your thing. Get us back in the game. Why can't the Falcons do that? We only do that in the fourth quarter when it was too late. Let these guys be on field generals. You don't, you picking these guys to be captains, but you don't let them be captains. And that's the issue. As a coach, get out of the way and let players play. This is why I say, this is why people always uh, I disagree when I say this, but this is why Jackson is the greatest coach of all time in NBA because he let Michael, he let Scotty, he let Dennis, he let those guys be who they are. Let them be who they are. Don't handicap these guys. He went to L.A. and did the exact same thing. He did not try to change Kobe. He did not try to change Shaq. He let them be them. When you let players be them and play the way that they play, but you're going to put it all together in one melting pot, that's when you get greatness. And this is the issue with the Falcons. The coach is just in the way. They got to be in the center of everything. We saw it with Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan got to be the center of everything. He fucked it up for us, and he fucked it up for uh, the 49ers. Get out of the way and let these players play. Where's the question, man? Please, that's that, because that, that, I'm about to lose my shit. <laughs> where, where, where's the question? Please, where's the question? Rico is out. Absolutely. Rico is out. Yeah. Says, do you guys think we should sign Earl Thomas or play Jalen Hawkins? No, I would not sign uh, Earl Thomas. Yeah. I don't want Earl. Th- I don't want Earl Thomas nowhere near my team. Nowhere near my team. Earl Thomas. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Earl Thomas got problems. I tell everybody, if you punching, you sucker punching players at practice. We do not need you here. It's called the brotherhood for a reason. 
-hmm. We do not need Earl Thomas here. Earl Thomas is a me, me, me guy. We don't need no me, me, me guys on the team. He all about himself. Mm -hmm. We can we, Dallas can have him. Mm -hmm. I don't want Earl Thomas. <laughs> I'd rather play Jalen Hawkins. <laughs> yeah, Dallas don't even want him. Dallas don't even want him. Boo Boo ass secondary. They got they 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 should be the first one to go get. Man. They don't even want they, him. That they, ought to look, tell you they something. Have them. You know they dysfunctional though, so they can have them. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I get, I, get, I get they say the wife pulled a tool on them like nah we don't want that we don't want them problems. Nah, we don't want none of them problems, dog. <laughs> no, 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 We don't want them problems at all. It, it, like I said, instead of just saying that, well, like I said, like somebody said earlier in the comments, like I said, get Deion Buchanan off their practice squad. Let him let mm -hmm. him play safe. Hey, that's my simple as I can go with it. It can't be no, it can't be no worse than what we've been playing in the secondary right now. He can't <laughs> be any worse than what we seen. Can't be any worse. Yeah, yeah. man. But, bring, um, bring uh, go ahead. Now I'm about to say, cause yeah, Rico skill set is kind of like five years too late. <laughs> 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 I, I, I like his leadership, but his skill set is five years too late. This game, this, man, this game, man. you need He's gone, game. man. He washed up. It's he, he, he Rico was washed up, and it, it came fast, quick, in a hurry. It's, I did not expect him to be this washed up this fast. And I said, for such a good guy, man, like him as a person, but man, I do not want that guy anywhere in my second year. I much rather have Jalen Hawkins. You know, put him out there, let him make some mistakes, and let him learn, man. He can't, exactly. like I said, he can't be any worse than what we've already. These guys have put up what almost a thousand yards. Hold up, yeah, almost a thousand yards in two weeks. Four hundred from Dak, and you get three hundred and something from him in two weeks, bro. Come on, that's that's crazy. That's crazy talk. That's crazy. In the first two weeks, that should not happen. So. He can't be uh, – I, I don't understand why they're not letting these young guys play. Why not? Jay Loggins can't be any worse than that. David Buchanan, he can't be any worse than what we had. So, but I'll come down to it, man. Um, Earl Thomas, man, I, I think he on that – he he got – he on that um, AB, man. Him and AB, man. I don't know what's wrong with them. Maybe a CTE. Maybe they just retarded as hell. Just, just – <laughs> I don't know what it is, but those guys, them, those guys just lost it. Them, they lost it. They lost them all. It was quick. I don't want him anywhere near. I don't want anywhere near this thing, man. It's already as bad as it is. We, it, it's going to get worse when we sign him. Exactly. We yeah. don't need him at all. Like I talked about it this week. It's time for us to bring up uh, Dayon Buchanan, bring him back from the uh, the practice squad, bring him up, and it's time to go ahead and plug in Bleedy Way. I'm sorry. I ain't seen enough of Isaiah Oliver, man. He done lost his confidence. It's time to bring <laughs> Bleedy in there, dog. At least I know what Bleedy, he got some good technique. He might be, like I said, he's no faster than Isaiah Oliver on the outside. He's not fast. But at least I know that he know how to turn his head around, and he's not going to just get dumb P.I. penalties. Because at this point, Isaiah Oliver don't know what he – he looked lost out there. So go ahead and give me that veteran. At least they on Buchanan and uh, Bleedy Way has been around the block a couple times. Well, at least they solid in their technique. And at least I know that they'll be in the spot that they're supposed to be in. But a lot of these younger guys, like I seen last week, Michael Walker, when he came in for uh, a four-year Luacan, he played okay. But you could tell that he's still trying to learn the system. You know, he's a rookie. Mm -hmm. So they kind of took advantage of him with Dawson Schultz. I've been watching a lot of the Cowboys YouTubers talking about Dawson Schultz and how he balled out last week. And I'm like, when four-year Luacan was in there, he was locking them up. It wasn't until he got hurt. And Austin Schultz did anything, and that was just mainly because mm -hmm. Rico Allen was not back in the back in that secondary, and then Michael Walker he just was caught out of position a couple times just because he's a rookie. So I mean, you might as well, like you said, let some of these young guys play. But I've seen enough of Isaiah Oliver until Kendall Sheffield's back. I want to see Bleedy Way in there, man. We kept Bleedy on the team for a reason. He's that guy. If you got to break the glass as all those spills. It's time to break the glass, y'all, because we about to be zero and three if we don't if we don't turn this around. So. I say it's time to break the glass. Isaiah Oliver, I haven't seen any improvement over the last two weeks. And at this point, when you don't have no confidence in yourself, how can I be confident in you as a coach? And I'm sitting here watching on TV. So I know 
the coach has got to see that this man has lost all confidence. So it's time to take him off the field. Mm. Unless somebody go down with injury and we got to play him, give me Bleedy. I'll put Isaiah Oliver on the uh, special teams until he can, you know, turn it around. Yeah, I'm about to say nobody talks about Bleedy being one of the highest rated corners that we had the last couple years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a veteran, man. Yeah. Like I said, he, he might not get you the interceptions that you want, but like you said, he'll turn that head He's back solid. and play, play that solid technique. Because at that corner position, boy, you mm -hmm. better have confidence to play that position. If you ain't got the confidence, you yeah. dead, dead to rights. Look at Robert Off. Exactly. Ooh, look at yeah. Isaiah Oliver. Every time somebody yeah. make a play on him, look at his face. You can look in his eyes. You can look in the man's yeah. eyes, dog. When they mm -hmm. put that camera on Isaiah Oliver mm -hmm. on Sunday, he looked like a deer in headlights, dog. Like he didn't know if he was coming or going. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's the problem. And I picked this guy to be a pro ball man. I think he still has the skills, but he's making me look like a dumb ass, okay? Making me look stupid for even looking at this guy and saying that he is. And, and the sad part about it is just, you know, he really does have talent, but without confidence, what's good is it? You know, what's good is that? What is good is it? Exactly. It's like the coaches believe in him more than he believes in himself. But they keep putting him out there, but it's like he's making them look bad. Like he out there just to be out there. It's like, come on, dude, if you're not going to play, like I said, at least give me Bleedy because I know at least Bleedy going to do what he's supposed to do. He's going to be in the position that he's supposed mm -hmm. to be in. He's going to play the proper techniques. Like you said, he ain't going to get you a bunch of interceptions, but he's not going to get, you know, get turned up. You know, he's not going to get uh, flags and stuff like that and not going to face guard everybody every mm -hmm. play. So. Right. <laughs> That's the biggest problem. Face guarding everything. He has to face guard everything. Well, it's like watching watching National De Geographic out there with him. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like when he get burned, it's like that lion, lion chewing through that zebra's ass. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you said, he like you said, he got it, but he don't got it mentally. Nah. He not confident, mm -hmm. dog. He not mm -hmm. confident. All, and once you lose that confidence, mm -hmm. it's Damn. over. When yeah, when when you can see it in the man's it's eyes, I looked at his eyes on Sunday. He don't got it, dog. He was looking like he was scared. Mm -hmm. He was looking like he was confused. Looking with his head down. Yeah, his man. Head was down. Everything. Yeah, everything man. Played, yep. And I'm like, when when and you seen that they kept throwing the ball right at him every single time on that back shoulder fade, mm -hmm. back pull it up. Mm -hmm. He like, I know he didn't even throw that pass to get it completed. He threw it up just to get up to the one yard line. Like I know if I throw it over here, he going it's gonna be a pass interference because this guy has no confidence. The dumb part about it, and this is why I put it on coaching this, why I keep leaving that man on the island when you see he's getting embarrassed? Like, that's that's called you need to make an adjustment, some type of adjustment. Take him off the field, mm -hmm. double team the guy that's over do on that something. side, do something. Mm hmm. I don't, I, that's that's what I don't get. That's what I don't get. At least take him and put him on the other side of the field and see uh, if he'll be better. They're, they're making no adjustments, they're not making. And that's the issue. It's like it's all about. It really is about adjustments, man. I say this all the time. You can have the best player in the world, but if a team sees that one kink in your armor, they're going to continue to pick on it. They're going to continue to pick on it, and it's up to the coaches to mask that. Exactly. That's the issue. If you see a teams, if you see a teams continuously on the same player, the exact same way. Every game, year after year, this is the second year in a row the Falcons have done nothing to mask that. They've done nothing to mask his deficiency. That's what coaches are supposed to do. That's what they're supposed to do. If you know Matt Ryan, if you know Matt Ryan continuously getting stacked, they getting pressure up the middle. You're supposed to call rollouts. You're supposed to get away from it. You're supposed to mask protect. You're supposed to do things to get these guys out of harm's way. But you continuously, as a coach, year after year, Isaiah Oliver continuously get beat. Guess what the Falcons do? They put him in a cut three, done, uh, and all the uh, all the defense, all the offense has to do is put him, use a um, a, a spread him out. They put three, two receivers on this side, and you force Demonte Casey to go away from him. That's that's it. It's simple, and the Falcons are doing nothing. You got to. 
a low blitz. You got to take it to them. You have to double. You put these guys in a position where they, like, you got to take it. You got to be more aggressive. And that's the issue that I've had with the Falcons, man. You said this before, and I think a lot of people have said this, sitting back and we just watching, reacting to what the other team is doing instead of being, you know, far as they're going after guys. You got to go after them. You can't be reactive, man. You got to take it to them. And this is why I've said it over and over again. And I'm going to say it again because I've been saying this for a while. All right? I don't give a care what I think. But Rex Ryan, Demar Dill, those are the guys for Atlanta. They're not going to sit back and just let you do whatever you want to. They're going to force your hand. Bill Belichick is going to force your hand. He's going to take what you do well and take that away. He's going to take it away. He's not going to allow Vic Beasy to get, you know, sacks in the game. He doubled, triple. He had three guys on Vic Beasy the whole Super Bowl. The entire Super Bowl. They, he didn't care if Grady Jerry got sacked. He knew that Vic Beasy wasn't going to get sacks. That's just intelligent. That's right there. That's just coaching. That's proper coaching. And that's the issue that I have with Dan Quinn. He sits back. He lets the same guy run the same draw. How many times have we saw um, Jameis, um, Kobe Brissett, Marcus Mariota, these guys, the same plays over and over and over again. Dan Quinn did nothing, did nothing. And he said today, I, I, like he said last week, last week in the press conference, I'm very much, I'm still, I'm still very much in charge of play calling. You see how this is? You see how it works? Dan Quinn doesn't want to take, he does not want to relinquish any power. When he tells me that these guys are going to be, be the play caller, and then when you start losing, you start to hear the truth. That's why I said it's, he's lying to he, he's lying to us. He's not allowing his coaches to be coaches. And this is something that myself and a lot of guys on the uh, the ground, we've been talking about this. Jude, we've been talking about this. Dan Quinn needs to let his coaches be coaches and stop trying to be involved in every aspect of the team. You can't do it. A head coach can't do it. You cannot watch every aspect of the team. You got to allow these coaches to be coaches. This is why when you look at Dan Reeves, under uh when he had Wade Phillips and we got something next Tuesday for you. I'm not gonna announce it now, but wait for it. But Dan Quinn, all right, Dan Dan Reeves, when he was playing when he had um Wade Phillips, Wade Phillips, he allowed Wade Phillips to just do whatever he wanted to do on the defensive side of the ball. And all Dan Quinn, all Dan Reeves had to do is just focus on the offense. That's it. Dan Quinn is trying to run everything with these stupid. You know, fourth down, going for it on fourth down. These stupid, you know, go, going for two-point conversions and stuff like that. Like, you cannot run every act. Let these coaches be coaches. Sit your ass down and let them be coaches. That's the issue. But, yeah, like I said, uh, Anthony pretty much gonna ask ask me, do I do I think Marlon Davidson and Charles Harris if they may play this week? So do I feel like they should play ten? Uh, I about to say, hey, put as many buys out there as you can. Because at the end of the day, you have you have to you 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 have to rotate these pass rushers. Like I said, if Tack does play and he's not doing well. That just go to what Mike said. Like I said, if they're not playing well, you have to make the adjustment. Let somebody else go in there and take a crack at it. And I think what I think this defense really is missing Davis's mentality because you can kind of see it in the way they play. Like I said, mm-hmm. Fowler and Grady, they they the dogs back there. Debo is a dog back there, but they need somebody else mm-hmm. to be a dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like I said, Charles, like I said, Charles, like I said, Charles Harris, like I said, throw them out there. But they probably gonna be on the pitch count since they've been injured the last couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Right. But if they healthy enough to where they can make an impact right away, <laughs> you gotta ride that horse to the finish line. I completely agree with mm-hmm. you, Kevin. We need Marlon Davidson, man. Don't make me go get my uh my Auburn hat. 
We need that man, dog. We need. I'm, I'm thinking about the combine. I'm talking about he want to put some, put some hands on somebody. And I go to jail for it. Hey, look, we need him to put his hands on everybody on that offensive line for the Chicago Bears this Sunday. Everybody. Last week we Start needed him, dog. Quit. Start with him first, dog. We need him to put hands on everybody, dog. Because yeah. last week the way that Zeke ran my man Devontae Casey over, oh, I was yeah. so heated about that because. The Monte Casey, my dog, man, and, and Mike talked about it. They call him Crazy Casey for a reason. Casey got heart. He knew he wasn't going to win that battle. He said, hey, look, this is the hole I'm supposed to feel. <laughs> hey, he said, this the hole I'm supposed to hit. This the hole I'm supposed to feel, and I'm finna feel it, dog. I might I might get trampled over. Hey, but look, he put it. Hey, he tried to get low. He just didn't get low enough, dog. And we know the low man wins, and Zeke, Zeke got well by a good hey, 50 pounds. Time. So, hey, he tried, mm-hmm. though. It was like one of the Oklahoma drills, dog. He tried. <laughs> oh, he, just got, no, he just got smacked. Now, he just got smacked. But, look, he got heart. The coaches can't go to the film session and say, look, son, you were out of your gap integrity. He filled his gap. He just got trucked over. Mm-hmm. But I got number of respect for somebody. Hey, that, man. Hey, when you with Demonte yeah. Casey, he, he a rider, it. dog. He a rider. I, I can live with that. He a rough rider. He got trucked over. But, hey, Zeke supposed mm-hmm. to run him over. He no, nah, dog. So I mean, we need I needed Marlon Davidson last week with that that mentality that if you come over here, mm-hmm. I'm gonna rough you up. And that's what Mar- that's what Marlon Davidson bring. Y'all gonna see if he play this Sunday, he a rough rider. And we need as many rough riders as we can get, dog. Because the last two weeks, like we said, we didn't given up about a thousand Ooh, yards in the last two cool. weeks. Cool. So right. we need those big guys and that's in the not this comment right here. Sorry, no, but this comment right here, this right here, skills, man, isn't it skills? The fact that he had him on the goal line to fill the spot right there is just enough for coaches. Like, he should not have been the guy to fill that hole. That right there, Jay, yeah, you every Because KZ is not meant, he's not built for big hits, especially <laughs> on a guy like Zeke. That nah, dude man. got muscles on in his head, bro. That dude got muscles <laughs> in his forehead on his head. Yeah, man. And, like, everywhere. No way, no way he should have been. No way he should have been filling that hole. That right there but, is embarrassing. But yeah. what does that tell you, though? That show, if you go back and watch that play, it was no penetration from the defense. And that's why I'm saying Marlon Davis is going to be yeah. dead because on that play, it was literally mm-hmm. nobody there. It was Keanu Neal was slowing down and try to help fill the, fill the gap. But by the time uh, Keanu Neal got in the hole with him, it was too late. He was already, he had already got smacked. So I say that Marlon Davidson, Grady Jarrett, and they were double teaming, you know, double team blocking Grady Jarrett like always. There was nobody else getting, you know, splitting the double team. I I, I gotta say this because I, I don't know. I made a video on this, man. I've said this so many times. I apologize, I do. I apologize, good, but man. I gotta say this. I, like everybody, I say this all the time. Why are we so about how strong, how big guys are? God plays strong. Grady Jarrett is not even barely 300 pounds. Do y'all realize that? Grady is barely 300. Wow. But he plays much bigger than what it is. It's, how, it's all in your heart. It's not about size. We see some 330-pound guys who softer than they, they softer than damn Sherman. It doesn't matter how big you are. Stop saying that the Falcons are too little. It's That doesn't matter. It's all about how you play. So the fact that people saying that, oh, he he's a three tech. Yeah, he's a three tech. But I know some three techs. We got a three tech right now. We got a, a hundred and five pound nose tackle and Tyler Davidson. This guy is barely three hundred pounds, but he holds his own. Why? Because he's technically sound and he uh, and he's strong. Not about his size. It's not about size. All right. So I, I had to say that because I'm sick. I'm tired of paying. The people saying that we need a 340-pound guy in the middle of the, that doesn't matter. If he can't, if he's not strong enough and his technique, you're going to get exposed in the NFL. Your technique has to be impeccable in the NFL. It's all about technique in the NFL. Everybody is strong in the NFL. Everybody is fast in the NFL. It's all about technique and, and awareness. Your IQ. That's what that that's what it means to be in the NFL. That's why you see guys like Tim Tebow we come in the NFL. They got these, you know, he had that little hitch in his uh, his throw. That's all you need. He couldn't fix it. That's a technique issue. This is what matters. Technique and IQ. 
So let, let's stop with that. Like, please, let's stop with that. Oh, we need a 340-pound guy. That doesn't matter in the NFL anymore. These guys are too strong, too fast. Hell, we got 13 years old. 13-year-old guy. This dude like seven foot tall, man. These guys are getting bigger, faster, and stronger. That doesn't matter anymore. It's all about technique, man. Everybody big. Everybody strong these days. It's all about technique. So I had to get that on. Yeah, I want. I want. I want to get some ball too. Like I said, going back to that KZ point. Lord have mercy. Like I said, you got six two hundred thirty going against five ten one seventy. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a bad matchup. But like, like you said, he shouldn't even Ooh. been in that game in the first place. Cause when he got ran over, mm-hmm. that's why mm-hmm. he stayed down. Cause he stayed down. Like, why the fuck did this just happen? Cause he got ran over and slid back by five yards. I don't know if nobody caught that. Nah, I caught it. I seen him slide. Mm-hmm. I seen him lay there. <laughs> oh, we, <laughs> we, we saw. We saw it. <laughs> but but plays but plays like that, dog. Is, yeah. Plays like that is why people call our team soft, man. Like plays like that should tick you off. Like when I seen it, I was like, "See, man, this is why we need Marlon Davis and we need our riders up front because you got to penetrate. It should never be a corner or a safety by themselves in a hole like that. It happens from time to time. But what that told me was. Everybody else was being blocked because I didn't see a single player in the backfield. When Zeke went and hit that hole, he was the only one there. And I seen Keanu Neal coming downhill. But by the time he tried to come downhill and help, it was too late, man. KZ had got popped. So (laughs) hopefully, like I said, and as Mike was talking about, y'all know I'm an Auburn fan. (laughs) Go look up the tape of Marlon Davidson. He played three techniques. Mm -hmm. He played the nose tackle at at, uh, Auburn. He played inside Mm -hmm. and outside. So he can play the nose position. He can play the three technique 290. position. 290. Just, dude was 285. Yeah. He was 285, yeah, he just, though. Yeah, he's just as big as it, he's just as big as Grady Jarrett. It made him lose weight, but he was at Auburn, he was 300 plus pounds, 305 pounds, 300 pounds. And he's one of those guys that, like you said, super strong. And what you what we talked about, Mike, it's about your hands. What makes Grady Jarrett elite oh is his short God. area quickness and his hands. You said Chuck Smith was telling you about you ain't got to be the fastest, but if you can do them swim moves inside and you hey. can get other guys' hands yeah. off you, and that's what Grady go does. Watch Grady it. has go a watch video. Yeah, man. I got it. It's in mad sit downs. Go look at it. Go look at it. Mad yeah. sit downs. Go listen to Chuck Smith. It doesn't matter about the size. It's all about hands and technique, bro. Exactly. Yeah, He'll man. Tell you, you, don't have, you don't have to be. You don't have to be tall. If you look at Geno Atkins, he's built just like Grady Jarrett. Small, stubby. Built like a fire hydrant, short, stubby, but he's he quick with his hands. He got good short area quickness, and that's the same thing with Marlon Davis. So y'all going to see he got the good, best he's, defensive lineman. The best defensive lineman in the NFL is undersized. He's 290. He's he ain't even that. He ain't he, even he, that. He, 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 he is yeah. tall. Exactly. He's wrecking, dude. He's in that wrecking, <laughs> dude. Size don't matter, dog. It's all nah. about technique and work. It's it all is about all about technique. heart. It's all about heart. I was telling you, like, KZ, he little, but KZ will hit you. Like, this is the first time I see KZ get jacked up. I don't, y'all need to go watch the tape against uh, the Saints last year when he cracked that receiver coming across the middle. Laid him out. Man. <laughs> I think it was Traquan Smith. Go back and look at that play. KZ's known for hit. He was hand, he was head hunting Cam Newton. When Cam That's Newton so tried weird. to slide, he tried to take Cam Newton's head off, dog. That's why they call him crazy <laughs> KZ, dog. So he was hey, due to man. get truck one good time. He been he didn't been head hunting everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause I about to say Marlon Davidson is the reason why Derrick Brown got drafted high. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. He was doing all the dirty work. He was he all was the, the dirty work. He was the Dominican Sue next to Aaron Donald. That's what he was. Mm-hmm. And he a rough rider. Right. I'm telling y'all. And, and Grady, mm-hmm. like you said, Grady Jarrett got the best quick step. In the mm-hmm. Better than yeah, that's one move. That's but, one move. Is serious, dog. I done seen Grady Jarrett split double teams, and they don't know what happened. One minute you see him, one minute you <laughs> in the backfield. Give <laughs> your run. Give your running back. I can hardly even hand the ball off. As soon as the quarterback hand the ball off, the running back he right there in his lap. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know y'all. Look, I know y'all remember Elvis Dumaville. You talking about small? Woo. Yes, yeah, he was yes, little, dog. yes. Mm-hmm. Little. And that dude, like I said, it's all about technique and how you like. Even uh, Von Miller, Von Miller just re- like playing at Texas. He wasn't a big guy. He gained weight when he got to the NFL. Really? He gained weight when he got to the NFL. And that dude, it's all about how what you do, what you got, man. It's all about heart. 
it's all about hand techniques, man. It's all about tech. everybody in the NFL is strong. Everybody in the uh, mm-hmm. NFL is uh, uh, mega major athletes. It's all about technique, man. Technique rules. That's why you got guy Matt Ryan, who doesn't has have a big time arm. He's not super fast, but guess what? He mentally sound and his technique with his feet impeccable. Impeccable. Look at Matt Ryan's feet when he throws the ball. Look at Aaron Donald's feet. Not Aaron Donald, but Aaron Rodgers at, at their feet. Look at their feet. Tom Brady, Drew Brees. Look at their footwork. It's all about technique, man. This is guy. This is why guys like Tim Tebow don't make it in the NFL because even um the quarterback for Georgia, these guys have these little hitches in their in a in a game and they throw them motion and it takes it, it throws everything off. That split second in the NFL. That goes for players. That goes for DBs. That goes for defensive linemen, offensive linemen. That split second. Got to have your technique. Technique is everything in the NFL. It doesn't matter about it. It really doesn't matter about size in the NFL, man. I'm really trying to get you guys to understand it. It doesn't matter whatsoever. It was. I know a lot of you guys remember this. This dude was like 200, 270, 280. That dude was sorry as hell. Big as hell, (laughs) but sorry as hell. Boo-boo so don't give me this. Oh, we need big guys. He was huge. He was a huge sack of shit. That's what he was. Excuse my language. Now don't get me wrong, Mike. If I can get a big yeah. guy, yes, if, if I can get a big guy and he a dog, I'm safe. Oh, oh, I'm gonna take him. I oh, want I'm to take him. Campbell, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna take him. Oh, don't get Clare's me wrong. Campbell. When he was a patient, when I heard Claire Campbell's face, I'm to Atlanta. Dog. We need that. We need that in Atlanta. He went to Baltimore. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, Baltimore always mm-hmm. getting all the defensive talent. Because he's one of them guys that he'll wreck your he'll wreck a game. Him and him and uh Grady together, man, that would be something special. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say you don't want no Albert Haynesworth out here. Oh Lord, mm-hmm. don't talk about him. I know him. You don't want them. <laughs> Got that, that money. Mm-hmm. That and boy was PBS soft. <laughs> he was on the big <laughs> But that's it. That's, that's, that right there. Y'all keep proving. Y'all keep proving to me what the issue is. I say it all the time. It's all about technique. Don't get me wrong. A big man, a big 330-pound guy with excellent technique will destroy any big guy at the same time with no technique. Te- no technique. Technique yeah. is everything in the NFL. It's yeah. all in the NFL. That's what you need. It's all about technique, though. Exactly. Boy, I mean, you saw it. Go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 I was gonna let you go ahead. Uh, Yeah, that, yeah, like I said, that technique, boy. Like I said, like I said, you can come in on athleticism, but like you said, when you get in there long enough, if your technique is bad, it shows, and Mm -hmm. it will show quickly. Ask this, look at Isaiah Oliver. That's it. Man, look, that's it. Look at Ty. Look at Ty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Get he stayed on the ground. Yeah. yeah, I know shots fired, but hey, I had to say it. Look at Ty. Ty just finally started learning how to use his mm-hmm. hands once Dante Fowler came around. Well, it was yeah. years and years that's and years it. with him just trying to bull rush 350 pounders and 310 pounders, uh, left and right tackles all day long, and ended that's up it. on the ground on his shoulder, injured. Every time you turn around, because he ain't had no technique, he was wild coming in there uncontrolled. Mm-hmm. Like I was telling you guys, playing angry but playing out of control. Mm-hmm. You got to Mm-hmm. Got out the technique, man. Okay. Okay. So your boy Brazilian skill said, "Are y'all more worried about Khalil Mack or Akeem Hicks?" I'm worried about both of them, but I'm really worried about I'm worried about Akeem Hicks first. And the reason yeah. I say that is because, yeah. like we were talking about, if you can get that initial pressure up the middle, and that's what I'm saying I need for the Falcons. And I believe we have it on this team. It's Marlon Davidson and Grady Jarrett. If we can get them guys in there in tandem playing together, I really think that we could create havoc because Zeke wouldn't have had his way with us like he did if we had somebody that can bring initial pressure. Even Dak Prescott, he wouldn't have threw for 400 yards because any quarterback will tell you. Mike know this. He said he played a quarterback back in the days. Oh, yeah. The first type of oh, yeah. pressure oh, yeah. is that pressure right up the teeth of your offensive line, right there between the guards Murphy, and the center. I was fast enough to get away, though. I was fast yeah. enough to get away. <laughs> hey, but you know that's the worst pressure because that pressure gets to you like right now. 
It ain't no, it's a reason why Mike Zimmer like running that double A blitz where he bring the middle line yes, right, right there yes. in the A gap. Yep. It is right there up on you. Because as a quarterback, unless you can run out of the pocket, that initial pressure is no way to get the ball off. You know what I'm saying? It's that pressure is on you mm -hmm. immediately. So if you can have, if they told me I can have a legit pass rusher, like a defensive end on the outside, or I can have like somebody like an Aaron Donald or a Grady Jarrett. I'm going to take a, a Aaron Donald or Grady Jarrett every time because they not only affect the passing game, but they affect the running game. If you got a great mm -hmm. defensive end, you can run away from a defensive end. Or you can, you know, so you can run the other way. You can run sweeps. You can run uh, draw plays. You just ways to get away from a great defensive end. It's really not a way to get away from an Aaron Donald because they affect everything. They right there in the middle. They affect the pocket when the quarterback's trying to throw. They affect that immediately. If like they penetrate, they can affect the running game. So I really think that Akeem Hicks, he's that guy on the Bears that does all the dirty work. He's that guy that's going to push the pocket and make the ball have to come out fast. If you got somebody screaming off the edge, and we know that with Big Beasley. Big Beasley had a quick first step. But how many times did we see Big Beasley get washed out of plays because he would run right past mm -hmm. the quarterback? The quarterback would just step up, and he's good. <laughs> but with like a Grady Jarrett or Akeem Hicks, you step up, you're going to get gobbled up as the quarterback because there ain't no pocket to step up into. And that's the worst type of thing because, as Mike was talking about with Matt Ryan, if you go back and watch any Matt Ryan game, the worst type of pressure Matt Ryan uh, hates is when it's people at his feet where he can't have yeah, a strong he, platform he, he to step up and throw. Back. Yeah, he can't step into his mm -hmm. throws. And that's the worst thing. You never want to mm -hmm. throw up your back foot as a quarterback. So if Akeem Hicks is mm -hmm. in the middle and he's pushing that pocket, man, that's going to be – it's going to be like hell, man. <laughs> it's going to be hell, hell on wheels, dog. So we, I hope that – you know, uh, Lindstrom, um, Alex, uh, Alex Matt. I hope that those guys come prepared to play on Sunday. Uh, Carpenter, those guys have been doing a good job of keeping that pocket clean when Matt Ryan can step into his throws. Because Matt Ryan is super and accurate. Good yeah, when he can step into his throws. But last year, you know, Matt Ryan had a lot of interceptions due to when he tried to step into his throws. A lot of the time, that pressure initially was coming right, in, right at the teeth of that, you know, of the defense. And if you if you bring in that pressure, like I said, right right into the teeth of the offensive line for a pocket quarterback, that's the worst thing ever for any quarterback, but especially for a pocket quarterback like Matt Ryan, where he can't step into his throws. So I really think that Akeem Hicks is going to be the guy that we need to you know really watch out for. Khalil Mack, Matt Ryan can step you know step in step into the pocket and kind of get away from Khalil Mack screaming off the edge. I'm not too worried about that mm -hmm. because Matt Ryan has a good sense of knowing. If you notice what Matt Ryan. He has great awareness. He knows when somebody's coming around the edge. But if you're coming from the middle, you know, he struggles when it's coming from the middle because he has nowhere to go at that point but go backwards. No There's nowhere to step yeah. foot through. So what y'all think, man? I, I, I'm going to keep it stupid and simple. The, a defensive tackle with quickness has a shorter path to the quarterback than a defensive end. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. Look at Warren <laughs> Sapp. Warren Sapp did it for years. Got plenty of sacks because he was looking at offensive guards. That's how Tony Dungy did it. That's it. You got to have that quick deep, uh, three tech. You have to, because he's going to wreck your entire game plan. He's going to wreck your game plan. You got to get, you got to scheme plays. You got to get him away. You got to stay in, uh, in the shotgun formation. You got to stay. You got to get away from him. So yeah. when it comes down to it, man, um, uh, I forget where is the question, but uh, um, not the question, but somebody was saying in the comments that you know, Kansas City, you know, these guys had a big team. Did you not see what Kyle Shanahan did, it, did to those guys? He ran up and threw them sideways. Oh, they ran like, any deep type deep of way the whole play. They ran them. Mm -hmm. The whole they were doing that, they were doing that to Kansas City. So size does not matter. These guys still made the right plays when they needed to make. It. And those guys, they have a small defense. That's not a big defense. Name of Chris Jones is probably the biggest guy. Yeah. If not the uh, yeah. That these guys are not these guys are not big. So like I said, it's all about it's all about technique in the NFL, man. That doesn't matter anymore. Mike, they've been watching my channel, dog. I'll take the blame for this. Saying we need a bigger team, dog. I've been saying for years, dog. Man, I want I want me a dog that's six four, six three, three hundred plus pounds in the middle. 
that you can't that you can't push out of the hole, dog. But like you said, you don't necessarily need that to win. My thing is this: mm -hmm. last week, I don't like to see my team get pushed around. And if you tell me what I would rather have, would I rather have a small team but a fast team, or on my defensive mm -hmm. line, if I'll have rather have a big team and a stronger team? Personally, I would prefer a bigger, stronger team because to me, with our Falcons, what I've been seeing the last couple of years is, like you said, in the first half, if you remember the Super Bowl, the first half, oh, we were getting out to Tom Brady. But to me, those smaller players tired out. You know, they tired. And it's not about necessarily being big necessarily. It's about the strength. Like you were talking about, Mike, it's about strength because Grady Jarrett is not the biggest guy. But to me, Grady mm -hmm. Jarrett has the strength of a bigger guy. And that's my biggest issue mm -hmm. with the Falcons is I've been seeing way too many years where our uh, defensive line and offensive line are getting pushed up and down the field. When we get on the goal line, I don't remember the last time I've seen the Falcons have a goal line stand where we keep somebody out of the end zone. It's like once I see somebody getting in, you know, past the five yard line, it's like, all right, here it comes. They finna just run the ball down our gut, you know, down our throats. And there's nothing mm -hmm. we can do about it. And that's what ticks me off. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that I love about yeah. Belichick and the Patriots, they make you play in a phone booth, dog. And they always have big guys in the middle that you might be faster than us, but we're going to continue to wear on you. And that's what I talk about when I talk about having the bigger players, bigger offensive line, bigger defensive line. You don't necessarily got to have it. I feel like you got to have a couple players that's strong in the middle. To me, with Dan Quinn, it's like you want all of these guys to be super quick in athletics instead of being quick, of being quick instead of being strong. And that's my biggest problem with players that Dan Quinn is bringing in. So I think that he's trying to change that up with a Marlon Davidson because the Marlon Davidson is a guy that's kind of bigger. He's not necessarily the fastest guy. He's a lot bigger and stronger mm -hmm. because a lot of, if you remember in the mock draft, they had us taking Caleb on chase on and he was like another big Beasley, yeah. skinny, yeah. quick, mm -hmm. athletic, but he wasn't the strongest guy. So I really thought that Dan Quinn was going away from that super athletic, but not really strong. Because to me, John Kaminsky, uh, Dante Fowler, those guys are actually stronger than necessarily quick. John Kaminsky is not the quickest guy, but he's big and country strong like um, Patrick Kearney that used to play for, you know, play with us. So a lot of the comments, <laughs> oh, that yeah. You're saying, yeah. Yeah, the, the comments that you're seeing, they probably been seeing my videos where I'm saying we too light in the tail. As I talked about last Sunday after the game. And I just said that because I seen the Dallas mm -hmm. Cowboys pushing us up and down the field like we were like we were a peewee. Like we were JV and they were varsity. When I seen Kaza get smacked and run over like that, it made us look like a Pee Wee team. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all about that mentality, though, man. That's more mentality than anything. Yeah. DJ, I uh, appreciate the super chat, bro. Really appreciate that, man. Um, I, I really do think it's one of them. Like I said, I'm not trying to belittle. Or make it seem like we don't need bigger guys. Of course, you need bigger guys, but when you have a team or a full of big guys and these guys aren't quick and not athletic, a team like Kansas City gonna run through you. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have a, a, a you have to have a, a steady diet of big guys and athletic guys. And I think that's what's wrong with the Atlanta Falcons. Kind of what you was alluding to. Yeah, we have a lot of you know athletic guys but we don't have those guys who are just you know big strong and that's the issue gotta have a mixture of guys uh, on the defensive line and that's something that the falcons definitely have yet to understand man um i don't know what's wrong with dan quinn um i'm not advocating for the falcons to lose because i still want to win when it come down i want to come down to and the falcons are definitely i uh, still in it. Believe it or not, we're still in it. It's only two games. Um, the Falcons get easy to go on the run and get back on. But we got to start with the coaches, man. The coaches, it's just way too many um, mental lapses and coaching decisions that I just don't, you know, I, I don't like at all. I really don't like it. Yeah, man. I agree with you, Mike. I completely, I completely agree. And like I said, you don't have to have yeah. – big guys on every position. I have no problem with the Deion Joneses of the world and the guys that are like our linebackers. I just not think that we need somebody mm -hmm. to keep those guys clean. We talked about it before the season started. We talked about how Ray Lewis always had um, 
uh, Tony Saragusa. He always had that guy in front of him to keep him clean so he can run sideline to sideline. So, yeah. yeah, to keep him clean. That's all we need. We don't necessarily need the whole line to be 300-plus pound guys. We just need a couple <laughs> of those guys that's going to do that dirty work, man. That's going to let the other guys get the glory. Tony Saragusa wasn't going to get a bunch of sacks. His job was just to sit right there in the middle and eat up, to eat up blocks. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Every great linebacker. What you think about that? Well, what'd you say? What, this question right here from Ezekiel. Okay, dude. Now nah, he don't. How can you? Like you said, you damn, you damn near dead last. Like you said, almost a thousand yards in two games. Like I said, offense has to be aggressive. Mm-hmm. What more can you they say? And then, like you said, when it's like saying, especially if you see your defense getting pushed around like that, that's the more mm-hmm. like. So he has to compensate for that by, you know, you got that. That's why I say I wish he'd take a couple more shots down the field to kind of get that momentum back up, to, to get that mentality back up. Because you know, you knowing as an offensive player, if you see your defense getting murdered every drive, it's like. Damn, what what can we do? We gotta keep it mm-hmm. going because like I said, we slip one time, then we know it's over. Exactly. I told people, man, we the coach. We the new Indianapolis coach, dog. If y'all remember, we the new greatest show on turf. We gotta put up points. That's what our team is built on. I know Dan Quinn's a defensive guy, but when we got to the Super Bowl, we was an offensive minded team. People keep thinking that why well, defense was better. They weren't necessarily better. They got turnovers. If you go look that year, we were like 25th overall mm-hmm. in defense, dog. 26th overall in defense. Mm-hmm. We weren't a great defense. We got timely turnovers. Mike always talk about it. And another thing I really wanted to touch on uh, in today's show was how Mike was talking about you need a good offense. You need a good defense. You need a good special teams. You need a good coaching. You need a good front office to have a complete team. And the problem with the offense right now is we have a great historical offense, but we don't have the other two. What, what failed us last mm-hmm. uh, last week? Yeah. Defense and special teams. The offense played lights out. Defense and special teams didn't, yeah. didn't hold up their end of the bargain. So we, I'm waiting for the Falcons to have a complete I'm game coaching. where we get defense, where we get the special teams, and where we get the offense at least to play mediocre. Because to be honest, the first two weeks, the offense been balled out. They're doing their job. We need the defense to step up. And we need the special teams to step up, point blank in the period. And we need the coaches to do their job. You can't expect Matt Ryan to go in and win all these games, even though I'm saying we're like the Colts. One thing that the Colts had on when they had Peyton Manning, when they started winning Super Bowls, they had players that would get timely turnovers. They had a Bob Sanders. They had a Dwight Free. They had a Robert Mathis. Mm-hmm. They had a Gary Brackett in their linebacker core that would make a play here or there. Mm-hmm. They want to shut down defense, but at, when it was time to make a play, the white freaky would get you that strip sack fumble. And we should know that because when he came in 2016, he was an old man and he still was out there doing spin moves. Man, and sack. He's still putting that work. Still yeah, putting so that's what, work, man. That's what we're missing, man. We're missing that one timely turnover. I talk about the Super Bowl all the time. If Robert Alford makes that second interception when the ball flew up in the air and three Falcons was around it and somehow Julian Edelman caught that football, that game is over. If we get mm-hmm. one timely turnover, game over. Game over. Game over. So that's all we really need. We just need everybody to hold up the end, of, you know, hold up the end of the bargain. We don't need our defense to be locked down because our offense is so high powered. We just need them to get us a couple turnovers. If they can get us one or two turnovers a game, put Matt Ryan on the short field where we can double up team and points. A lot of teams are not going to be able to keep up with us because I come to tell you guys, uh, Atlanta Falcons Nation, we got the best wide receiving core, hands down. With Russell Gage making the step that he didn't make this year. Um, we already got two number one receivers. By his yeah. I'm really surprised by his progression. I, I expected a turnaround, but I didn't expect him to be as good. I'm just, and maybe that is a lot to do with you know him receiving you know one on one, but even still, yeah, still like he's making plays. He's making plays, and that's all you need in the middle of the field. Just guys making plays and finding their groove because. Julio is going to be Julio. So we need you guys to step up and make a play. He's making plays. And that's that's what we're saying on the defensive side of the ball. When Grady Jerry is making plays, who's going to step up? Nobody's stepping up. 
The only guys I see stepping up is Deion, Deion Jones and Foyer Olakun. Those are the only guys making plays on the defense. That's it. We can't count on Mr. Uh fake fake love. We can't we can't we can't count on his ass. <laughs> we can't he gonna disappear. He gonna disappear or he gonna pull a damn groan or pull something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna be laying on the damn ground. We can't depend on him. So when it comes down to it, man, it's like, look, we we need guys to make those timely. Th- we want to make guys to get those timely stops and those timely turnovers. Get those timely turnovers. We get that on the offensive side of all. We can't expect Matt Ryan and Julio to make all the plays every single game. That can't happen. Who's going to step on the defensive side of the ball? AJ is playing pretty good for. He's playing damn good for a rookie. But outside of that, nobody's stepping up in the secondary. Isaiah Oliver making me look like a damn fool. <laughs> He's making everybody look like a damn fool. <laughs> Y'all remind me. Yeah, man. But hey, Drew, I about to say when you talked about that cold defense, you forgot one more name that was on that defense, too. Who that Booger McFarlane? Because he was a dog as a nose tackle. <laughs> Jeff Obert. <laughs> Oh yeah, Ooh. yeah, man. They had they had guys that made plays, man. Point blank in the period, they had guys that made plays, and that's what Ooh. I'm talking about. We need some guys that's gonna step up and make plays. Point blank in the period, like you said, yeah, Julio Jones did drop a touchdown last week, but he still was balling out. You can't expect like like Michael saying he human just like anybody else. We can't expect the offense to make all the plays, and our defense just give up uh, touchdowns on every single drive. Like that's just you know what I'm saying, and that's what. Mike was coming at that one caller that called in. I was talking crazy about Matt Ryan. It's like, what do you want Matt Ryan to do? You want him to be 50 for 50 passing? 100% completion? It's like, what do you want from this, this guy? This guy doing everything. He's passing for over dang near 70% completion pack, uh, completion rating. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what you guys, what else you guys want. This man got six touchdown passes and one interception so far this year. I mean, he's doing, he's balling out. We need the other guys to hold up the end of the deal. And some of these guys also, mm-hmm. going back to what we were talking about earlier about special teams, sometimes you just got to go rogue. And I told my wife this. We talked about this. And she's not the biggest football fan. But I was so upset last mm-hmm. week about that, that special teams play. I was talking to her. Like, sometimes you got to forget coaching. You got to go rogue. What that means is forget what the coach told you to do. Go win the game. Bump what the coach told you to do. You go back to what you used to doing. I've never seen mm-hmm. on an onside kick them telling you to back away from the football. Use your instincts. Mm-hmm. If that ball's right there in front of you, dive on it. Point blank in the period. Like sometimes you gotta bump what they told you to do and just do what you know to do. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Because now you, you look at that. Like, he blaming you as the players. Like why they look? Why they standing there? Like we call them the players dumb, but really it's the coaches dumb because they telling them to do dumb stuff. We sitting there saying the kids <laughs> is dumb and. Uh, what's the other? Jaden Graham is dumb. They ain't dumb. Jaden Graham uh went to Yale. Uh, the kids went to UVA. These guys are not dumb. Go look at these guys' test scores. These guys ain't dumb. Our coaches are telling them to do dumb stuff, like point blank in the period. Hey, look, it's like it's like it's like it's like having the answers on the test, and you still fail. Exactly. That's it. They know it's coming. They, they still stupid. That ain't on that. That ain't on the players. That's the damn coaches telling them to do dumb ass, dumb, dumb crap. You can't exactly. you can't win that way. You can't win that way, man. Mm-hmm. It's it's like I said, man. Um, um, Adrian, look, I've said this about four times. Okay, I think uh, everybody. Uh, if you guys have seen, um, I forget the film guy. But he works. Uh, he he has a YouTube channel. He was saying the same thing coming out of college. Isaiah Oliver. Isaiah Oliver was projected to projected to be a late round first pick. The guy has the talent. It's never been about the talent. Can the coaches get that out of him? That's what coaches are supposed to do. Tom Brady was a seventh round pick. Can the coaches get the talent out of him? Bill Belichick and um whatever his name is um. Josh McDaniel, Josh McDaniel, they got the best out of Tom Brady. So it's not all about is this guy good when he came out of college. Can your coaches get the best out of the play? Grady Jarrett, I can keep going on and on. Grady Jarrett 
a fifth round pick. Dan Quinn was able to get the best out. It's all about your coaching and how you utilize the players. He's doing a brilliant job of utilizing Grady Jerry, but everybody else, he's not doing anything for him. He's not doing anything for those guys. That, that's what it's all about, man. He got to get the best out of the players, and Dan Quinn is just not doing it. He's just not doing it, man. Got another question in the chat. It says, how has uh, Dante Fowler played so far? You want to take this one, uh, Kevin? I'll take it. He's been pretty damn good so far. Like I said, you can already tell the you can already tell the difference because everybody's got to be on their game now. Like I said, oh, yeah. like I said, Tack, like I said, Tack had some, he had a couple plays so far. Mostly it's been him laying on the ground, but <laughs> but you can like I said, Fowler, <laughs> <laughs> but but Fowler Fowler's presence, it, you could tell the defensive lines the game has stepped up just enough. Like I said, when Marlon Davidson get back, like I said, now that pressure will be off of him, you'll really see Fowler shine. Exactly, I agree. Com I completely agree with you, uh, uh, K Styles. Like we need at least a three headed monster up front. We've seen that first game when Tack was still healthy, when Dante Fowler was, mm -hmm. you know, eating, and when Grady Jarrett, we had them three guys that consistently could get pressure because somebody's going to get double teamed, meaning somebody's going to be singled up. And I really feel like when Tack hurt his groin last week, it really affected our team for the mere fact that, okay, now they can really key in on focusing on Grady Jarrett and Dante Fowler. Who's going to be that third guy that can get pressure? And Steven Means, yeah, that's Jacob Toy Mariner. This Those guys were not doing it, though. And that's – go ahead, Mike. Yeah, it's, it's going on to what you were saying. Brazilian that skills asks, how do you think um, Fowler has been so far? Yeah, man. And that's what I was saying. I, I, I agree with his styles. Like, I think I think he's been good. I think so far Fowler's been playing pretty good. I mean, I think that we just need uh, Marlon Davidson to come back. We need – um, John Kaminsky to step up, and then I'm really, really hoping that uh, Charles Harris can bring something to the table because I was really um, thinking that he was one of those guys coming out of the draft out of Missouri. He was one of those guys in the draft I was looking at for the Falcons, and I think that he has something in the tank, man, because we all know Miami, the Miami Dolphins are one of those franchises that's, you know, they're one of those delusional franchises. They don't know how to like you say, put players in the position to succeed. So you really couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, you couldn't get, you didn't get the best out of Charles Harris there, but I seen some flashes out of him, even when he was with the Dolphins, that he had something in the tank. The real question is what Mike was saying. Can our coaching staff pull it out of him? And I really think that Dante mm -hmm. Fowler, the guy he's talking about, is one of those guys that they say been working with everybody. Marlon Davidson, Tap McKinley, he was the main one telling Tap McKinley, man, you got to get another pass rush move, dog. If and he's one of those guys. On, on said mm -hmm. that on tape. <laughs> yeah. Chuck Smith said the same thing. Chuck Smith been saying this. That's why I wanted to, him to come on the show. He's been saying this. Listen to him. Go follow Chuck Smith. I'm telling you, boy, man, Mike sent you. We've been saying this. We want guys to come in here and tell the truth. And the fact of the matter, it's about technique. You can't continue to bull guys all day and think that's going to work. That's not going to work. It's technique. Got to add to it. So man, um, we're move. gonna go to you gotta have that counter move, man. And we're gonna go into our two-point conversion, man. Uh woo. <sighs> woo. oh man. Um where is where 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 do we start? Like Tiffy, where do we start with this two-point conversion, man? Uh Uh, out case styles, man. We're gonna go with you, dog. All right, so beforehand, I'd like to say I appreciate everybody watching the show tonight. Mm -hmm. Make sure you follow everybody, Twitter handles, YouTube. Um, like I said, we we do this for y'all, and we do this for us too. Because, like I said, this is therapy for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Especially right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. But 
I'm gonna go ahead. My two part conversion is uh, I know we've been hearing the story about these bogus charges on Breonna Taylor. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Basically, they charged this officer because he missed, he didn't shoot her. They charged the first guy that blind fired in there. And the dude that actually shot her is the ones that got away. So it's like when we say when we say it's two different two different systems out here, justice systems, we is not kidding around here. Mm-hmm. It's a genocide going on right now. And it's like I said, we we just have to we just have to enjoy our time that we got right now. Love, love everybody you can love because you don't want to end up being the next hashtag out here. And it, mm-hmm. like I said, that's a messed up world to live in, especially for our, for our kids. It, 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 I, I, I can't really say no more of that because I, I might get kicked, <laughs> off, might get kicked <laughs> off the internet. <laughs> but I'll, yeah. say, I'll say this. At the end of the day, that's still some bullshit. But mm-hmm. I, I take it over to somebody else. I'll man. go last because I got to make an announcement. So I'll go last. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, man. I'll go ahead and go then. Hey, K Styles, we should have made you go last, man, because you you come in, you hitting hard, dog. Talk about Brianna Taylor, dog. <laughs> hey, we got I'm, to, we got to. I'm, I'm sitting here talking about football, and it's more, you know, it's more important stuff going on than football, y'all. Amen. But I'm a I'm gonna keep it with football because. Uh, since Kevin already covered it, K Styles already covered it. But what I'm gonna tell the Atlanta Falcons Nation is it's not over. We 0 2, but I'm coming to tell y'all if we win this week, we can beat the Bears. I'm telling y'all right now, bold prediction the Saints are losing this week to the Packers, and they're gonna be 1 2 as well because they lost last week to uh, Las Vegas Raiders. So if we win this week. We right up, we right back in the thick of things. We get one win. All I need is one win, dog. You get one win, mm-hmm. that's how you build momentum. Right now, we're on this losing streak, we're on this slide, but all it takes is one win to get that confidence in these players. All these players we're talking about, Isaiah Oliver, and that's why Mike was talking about last week on our after our post-game show that sometimes it's the way that you lose that's demoralizing. Mm-hmm. But what we're gonna really see uh, with this adversity, as K Styles was talking about in his video. We're really going to see what these players are made of. So all we need is one win to get this thing back on the right you know, on the right track. So we got the Bears this week, and then next week we got the Packers on Monday Night Football. So I'm telling y'all right now, I seen the Saints play last week, and they look horrible against the Raiders. Without Michael Thomas, they look horrible. <laughs> Drew Brees' arm is dead, and they look horrible. Drew Brees is old, man. He need to go ahead and let Father Time to let it go. Let yeah, it he, go need to let, he need to let it go. <laughs> but they, they are the defending NFC South champs if for the last three years the saints have been the nfc south champs so it's it's mm-hmm. our turn to get th- to three peat we're the only team out to believe in the division other than the buccaneers that haven't got a three peat the panthers three peated and won a division three years in a row when cam was there and then the last three years the saints have owned the division so it's time for us to take back over the south and i really Damn think right. this is this is going to be the year but we need this win this sunday i don't care who playing who lacing them up Falcons Nation, this is our pet rally tonight. We need to step up and win this game. I don't care how you get it Amen. done, but we need to win this game. Everybody know and say I'm a Dan Quinn apologist. I'm telling Dan Quinn right here on the show tonight, we need to win this game. I don't care if I hook or my crook. You find a way to win this game on Sunday and get us back in the thick of things in this playoff run, uh, playoff uh, picture because we can't have no more 0-3, 1-5, 1-6, 1-7 starts. It has to start this week against the Bears. So I don't care how we do it. I don't care if we win by a point or we win by 30 points. But we better win this Sunday or we're going to have some harsh words for everybody. So oh, that's yeah. all I'm going to say. Yeah, I better tune in after that game because, look, depending on what's going on, we bring oh, it. It's going to be hot. Oh, it's going to be hot. <laughs> motherfucker, gonna be, that motherfucker either going to be a hero or he going to take the Bobby Petrino route. <laughs> 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 Make sure oh, y'all man. tune in right directly after the game. Tune in to Atlanta Falcons Nation for real. Like last mm-hmm. week, it was huge. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. Yeah, yeah. You going, Mike? Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna say this, man. Um, 
Hey, Sean, how you doing? <laughs> Shoot your shot, Sean. <laughs> Shit, you know what? <laughs> We're not about here. About- <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Girl, about to get yeah. choked tonight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. They hey, see man, Maggie and goddamn. What, what's going on? <laughs> Who is that lady on that show? Hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm going to say it like this, man. Um, the dumb shit got to stop. Like, uh, we just gotta stop the dumb crap. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so sick of seeing so much dumb shit around one particular player. It's just getting to a point where it's just, it's, it's you just, you just fucking stupid. You just fucking stupid. It, it really just, just, um, you just fucking stupid. If you still hate Matt Ryan now. It ain't no hope for you. There ain't no hope for you. You're just stupid. Okay? So if I say you're stupid and I don't want to talk, know why. It's not because I don't have any proof that Matt Ryan isn't a Hall of Famer. It's because I'm talking to an idiot. I don't want to waste my time on stupid idiots. I'm tired of talking to dumb idiots. You're stupid. At this point, if you think the guy who had over 50 of a 50, we're talking about this dude about to go into the Hall of Fame for over passing John Elway, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in almost every statistical category you can imagine. And he was still saying that Matt Ryan sucks? No. At this point, don't even tag me on Twitter. If you're a Matt Ryan hater, don't tag me on Facebook. Don't message me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to idiots. You're an idiot, okay? You're an idiot. It's sad that we still at this point right now, still blaming this guy, okay? You never see that ever again on this channel, not on this panel ever again, where we bring on some idiots to say that Matt Ryan should have got one more first down. We would have won the game if Matt Ryan would have got one more first down. Down. This is what we're talking about. That right there is a stupid comment in itself. We're talking about a quarterback who put up 39 points, and you still talking about, oh, he lost because Matt Ryan. He didn't get the first down. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we doing? It's sad. So, from this point on, if you see me in the streets, don't talk to me, especially if you're a Matt Ryan hater. I'm just going to walk right past you and not say Because that's because my quarterback. I'm, that's my that's quarterback. Your quarterback. That's your quarterback. That's my quarterback, and I'm just tired of talking to idiots. There's no point <laughs> in talking to idiots anymore. Don't even waste your breath. Don't waste your fingers, your finger motion, the type. Don't do any of that. Don't. I won't respond. I don't respond to stupid people anymore, okay? You're dumb, all right? I said it. You're dumb. So with that being said, Miss Maggie, what you got, man? Well, well, well. I came up on here, you guys, because I already announced earlier this um, this earlier that um, this is the last night for Friday night heavy hitters. Now, don't mean that we might not come on. I don't know what we're gonna do on Fridays, but we are moving to Tuesdays. But the special announcement, and you know, we like to have interviews with former players. So tune in to the heavy hitters next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because we're going to have the heavy hitters will have Falcons Chris Draft um, on their new night on Atlanta Falcons Nation. So he will be here. They're going to the guys going to be interviewing him. Um, I've seen him on um, another show that we affiliated with um, Fila Sports and it's just been amazing. And you never know who he might bring as a guest host. So y'all might mm-hmm. want to tune in to that episode. I'm telling you, tell your friends, share this link, share this YouTube, Everybody. whatever you got to do. But guess what? We want to see your comments on the screen to ask him some questions on that night. So y'all got to tune in. But you know what? Um, I don't have a little after shot or, well, you know, two point conversion. I just wanted to announce that. Y'all look, we are doing big things right about now. We're on Twitter live. That's unheard mm-hmm. of. We're on, you mm-hmm. know, YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're everywhere right about now. So um, 
Reddit. We're on there. So Instagram, follow mm -hmm. us. Type in Atlanta mm -hmm. Falcons Nation. Follow us wherever you can follow us. As well as we're getting ready to probably put these on audio so you can listen to the audio broadcast. So you just never know where we are and where we turn. So I want everybody, if y'all haven't followed these guys right here, Mr. Mad Mike Sports, go ahead and follow him. Jew Talk Sports, go ahead and follow him. Let's talk about just, just K Styles. Look, he's new to the game, but guess what? He knows <laughs> everything. That is somebody that's a historian. You're going to know some history about this dude. So y'all got to follow all these people. But don't forget, last but not least, yes, yeah, Spotify, all of that. We're going to be on all of that. So oh, we're all, we all, all of it. Yes, we're all of it. There you go. We're going we to bring it to y'all so y'all can be listening to us in the car on the way to work. It don't matter. But guess mm -hmm. what? Don't forget, last but not least, go ahead and subscribe to the Atlanta yeah, Falcons yeah. Nation. Man, I'm on Spotify. Man, yes, Mike Matt Mike Sports, Sports on Spotify. Yes. And yeah. we're going to get Atlanta Falcons Nation right on that, right behind it. Mm -hmm. So, on the you know, until for the next time, make sure y'all tune in, subscribe. We'll make an announcement again about Tuesday's show, but don't miss this episode. We definitely mm -hmm. got a special guest, and he's amazing. So, until next time, everybody, peace. Matt Ryan, hey, so shut the hell up. Oh, and me and uh, Kevin, uh, K Styles got a song we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, y'all had to put that in. <laughs> yeah, the musical style is a Miss uh, Maggie and K, K Styles. We're gonna do.